Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and today I am here with Ashley Sanchez. Hey! <laughs> All right, so we are going to be answering questions that Gen Z, I was about to say Gen Zers, uh, the Gen Z, <laughs> the Generation Z, they're asking. So we have a Calvary question box. So it's a Cove. So Cove is our youth group name, Calvary or Valley events, evenings, whatever. I don't know. But we have this question box out during youth group and then we have like little white paper slips that kids can ask any questions they have and then we will answer at the next youth group that we have or just when we're doing a q a night so today we are going to answer some of those that's why ashley who is a school counselor and what are your other titles would you be considered a therapist yeah well technically i'm a mental health Mental counselor, health yeah. counselor. There yeah. you go. So she the, <laughs> she is very um, certified and equipped to be here. <laughs> Super Me, certified. not as much. Okay. <laughs> but I hopefully can give some scripture advice, like a big sister. So that's how I look at it. All right. So do so you like, want to start or do you want so me like to start? I can do one. You can do one. Okay, and then we'll just like bounce. That. Yeah. That so, sounds, okay. That so, sounds good. And then I'll just take one from both kind of categories here. You guys so. don't know. Like we have, there's so many. Like all these there's like a ton and they're like so many of these that the children the children have asked <laughs> i am not in the mic but i'm excited <laughs> to answer a few of them so yeah you can start all right so um our first one is what is the best way of getting rid of an addiction mm. Ooh, that one's hard. Woo. So I will say, um, well, first, what is an addiction? If someone's out there, like, what uh, do you mean? an addiction can be many things. I think the first thing that we generally gravitate to are drugs, marijuana, alcohol, but there's other things like coffee, social media, pornography, anything mm -hmm. that takes our time that we have intrusive thoughts about. That means thoughts that constantly say like you know, like I need to do it. I need to, I need this to relax myself. I need this to, um, to get me through my day. It's like an addiction is anything that takes your time away. You put a lot of time and energy, um, into that thing. Mm -hmm. So that could be substances. It could be, um, social media scrolling mm -hmm. hours and hours. It could be yeah. drinking five cups of coffee, 10 cups of coffee. Like I've heard it all like mm -hmm. Red Bulls and stuff like that. So that is something that will just take your time. Now, the question is, what is the best way of getting rid of an addiction? And the first thing is, one, being able to acknowledge that you have an addiction. Yeah. A lot of times people will tell you, wow, you spend a lot of time gaming. You spend a lot of time on this computer. What are you watching? Mm. And we resort to getting angry and upset and we want to protect ourselves. And so... When we have that that guard up, we're not able to move past to the next mm -hmm. step, which is what are going to be the active steps that I need to take to one, stop my addiction, and two, where is my mind mentally and emotionally when I am going through this, when I am in this act, when mm -hmm. I am actively in my behavior, mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of times people think that they just have to cut cold mm. turkey. But like if God can do that for you, yeah. I believe that God can, you know, like help you do that. But sometimes the reality of the world is, is that we have to struggle through the trials because those are the consequences of our actions. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to refrain and to withdraw. And it's painful. Mm -hmm. But that shows, but that pain that we feel when we are actively in this behavior, that shows and that's evidence of the addiction that we have. So how do I stop? Number one, acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Like, how does this impact my life? If I didn't do it, would I be angry? Would I be depressed? Would mm -hmm. I be anxious? Number three, find someone to help you confess that. Or two. Talk about it. Or two. Can I not count? Can I math? Can I <laughs> math? Like, 
oh lord just i came back mad. to work yeah too <laughs> i just got out of work too <laughs> so um so number two confess that like mm-hmm. talk about what is going on in your life and number three allow someone to walk with you yeah. get the accountability that could be a mental health counselor go to a rehab guys there is no shame in going to a rehab that is going to help you get to a place of sobriety it's okay like god will not only walk with with you if you receive him and you accept him and you truly want to walk in that healing and in that peace but also there are men and women teenagers all out there who are walking in your shoes and so they are able to help guide you and go through that process of healing confession and sacrifice and i think that's the biggest piece is am i willing to let this go am i willing to sacrifice this temporary feeling that makes me feel bad and yucky Mm. and gross about myself for the greater good and for the peace of mind but also in obedience to god and so that's going to be the hardest part but if there are any more specific stuff please ask them down in the comments quite question i will be more than happy to answer them exactly for like resources that was and good stuff. Yeah. yeah all right so the question that i have is what are good boundaries to set with my boyfriend which i love this question because i had to go through that with my now husband ryan when we were recording um we had boundaries and stuff but I first would say that whoever you're with, you guys need to be on the same page. The Bible says in Amos 3, 3, how can two walk together unless they're agreed? Um, And so I really think that if you are dating someone who is not a Christian, first of all, you're unequally yoked, meaning there's two oxen and you have like a baby oxen and then a bigger one. And it's like one's pushing the other one this way and the other one's always trying to pull and especially if you're the girl that's trying to pull that man which I know a lot of women are like oh you know he's just a fixer upper and he'll get there and you know I love pastor JP um he is with what is it becoming something podcast and he always jokes he's like I always get so many questions on my Friday Q&A's about oh my my boyfriend he loves God he's on fire for God but he also is addicted to marijuana and loves playing video games <laughs> and he never goes to church and they're like mm, uh, no that's not a Christian right there uh, just there's no fruit and so that's how you can tell is by the fruit um, but anyway for boundaries you guys need to be in agreement with that like if you mm. notice that he's not wanting to do what you're saying like by you're like, hey, I would like to, you know, save our kiss for marriage. I know so many girls that go into relationships and they say that um, because they know kissing leads to other things and, you know, just to sexual immorality. But the guys like, or even they say, okay, like they agree, but then they push the boundaries and stuff like that. That's when you know to get help, tell someone basically get out of that relationship and seek counsel. Um, but some good boundaries to set would be if you guys are in agreement and you're trying to figure it out. First of all, I would say write down your boundaries and then have accountability partners who are not also like they should be someone who's probably married and that would possibly even do your premarital counseling one day. Um, but just have them hold you accountable or family with those boundaries for Ryan and I, we had a good amount of boundaries Ultimately, the main thing is if you don't fear God, none of these are going to matter. You can sneak anything. We had all the boundaries and all the chaperones, like in Trinity as a personal chaperone, and we could have easily snuck things if we wanted to, but that's where you have to fear God. Um, Because we were just talking about that. I was talking with Trinity and Ariel, and the Bible says for don't even let a man should not even touch a woman, you know, and then another thing, well, if you're not married, And then the other verse that says, do not arouse love before it's time, talks about in Song of Songs. Um, In 2 Timothy 2.22, it says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. So even stimulates when Pastor JP says, how you know if you're crossing boundaries is if your body is preparing for sex. And you guys know what that means. And if you don't, ask a parent or mentor. (laughs) Go Um, home. (laughs) If you literally... You you know, and so if your body's preparing for sex, you've gone too far. And that could be holding hands. And that might be too much for you. Uh, that might be front hugs. So you can't do that. You just stick with a side hug. Side hugs too much. Just the fist bump. You know, like you you have to be extreme because you're the fight for purity is difficult. Like you're saying, a lot of people have addictions, even with 
their yeah. their partner or with their boyfriend or girlfriend. And so their addiction is to, you know, give in to whatever they want and their feelings. Um, so I would say if you can't kiss, it's not really going to lead to a lot of other things. If you're not alone, you can't really do that much. If you're really careful with your phone, because you guys could text things that are inappropriate, you got to mm. think of that too. You're like, oh, we've yeah. never done anything. Yeah. But you're long distance and you're sending things you shouldn't, text or whatever, uh, FaceTiming. Ryan and I didn't FaceTime with people not there because that could get weird. Uh, just you have to be so careful. So I'm not also past 10 or past 12 p.m you get drunk with tiredness that also makes people do stupid things um so yeah those are just a few of the boundaries but ultimately make sure you just ask the lord to search you and don't ever think how close can i get to the line no you should say how far can i get from it and how close can i get to the jesus and then when you get to the altar you say i do you may now kiss the bride have you at can it. Do You're whatever married, whatever, you, whatever want. you want. So you can so, do whatever you want. Yeah. So it was worth the wait, <laughs> let me tell you. So But you know what's something that I want to add to that before we go on to the next one mm -hmm. is that you told me one time, you were like, Well, what if in the event it doesn't work out between me and Ryan, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so I still need to see him at church. Exactly. He's my brother in Christ. Exactly. I don't make out with my brother, yep. right? And so yeah. like kind of seeing it like that because like I think what's cool about the courting process if you even want to call it that or just dating in general is you're getting to know someone yeah and you don't know them they're a complete stranger and yet you're jumping the gun to like make out and hold hands and hug mm -hmm. and lean up but like all up on each touch other mm -hmm. and you're like whoa 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 like the reality is, is that you don't know that person. Exactly. Right. Like you might have known them through like a mutual friend yeah. and they go, oh, that's a good guy. And you're just like, oh, he's nice. He treats mm -hmm. me, you know, he treats me well or she's a great girl kind of thing. Do, 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 do. But yeah. then you're over here doing these acts that are going to, again, could cause you to stumble now exactly. if you are someone who girds their loins and you got the <laughs> strength of goliath or something and you know you're just like i'm not courting anybody that's cheesy or that's mm -hmm. lame god bless you. I, mm -hmm. you like good for you but yeah. but reality is is that if i were to date someone here at church i wouldn't want to like cross any cross boundaries. that boundary because so if awkward. it didn't work out do you know how weird that yeah, is yeah someone would end oh, up leaving so awkward yeah oh. no that's, oh lord and that's, that's where so like even one thing i just want to just encourage my husband and men out there there are godly men like that out there like ryan protected me so much mm. and the fact that yeah. like he wouldn't even like also like he never looked at me where it was like I never wore like inappropriate things or tried to in front of him. He didn't even want to try to look at me that way. And cause we weren't married yet. Or like, I never, I tried to like talking about modesty. Mm. We did that yesterday. Like he would appreciate when I like bend down, like I would hold my shirt. So, you know, want it go down or mm. I didn't yeah. wear like inappropriate. Like when we went swimming, I'd cover up and stuff and I didn't wear like two pieces or anything like that. So just saving that for marriage is so special. And Ryan will tell you that. But the other thing is we have this boundary to not touch from um, the knee cap, like anything like from the kneecap to like up here because all of that are like no, no this is your no no square you don't touch that and i've seen so many couples where they just hold the inner thigh or that i'm like for me that's too much and then if it's not like pastor jp said it's like if you can touch like that and you can talk like that and you can kiss like that or whatever you say and you're not getting excited and all the things he's like something's wrong maybe it is a platonic <laughs> relationship and you shouldn't you be got together friend zone, bro. yeah something is weird and so it's okay if it's like weird and you can't and you literally because like even ryan when we took pictures together we couldn't even be on the side that long he would literally tell me he's like morgan and vel did this and this is gonna sound so weird to you guys out there but we would have to be like count it like i love you so much okay like too much because and we for sure didn't do front hugs because it's just too much going on and that's okay people mm -hmm. are gonna tell you you're weird but when you're married and you have that freedom and you don't have to have those past regrets or like those things yeah. and also don't have your um boyfriend or girlfriend as your accountability partner with other things you're 
struggling with that is not going to help too like be with some like talk to someone who's like for girls talk to mentors or girls that are older and wiser and maybe married or all these things don't talk to someone have someone hold you accountable who's also dating and they're struggling like make sure you have that so anyway we went on that for a long time but that's important that's a lot of questions that, that, these, was, these, that was explained well, these but Gen also Zers are humor asking. because we can't get too serious. <laughs> yeah, up, up can't in these. This is Gen Z we're talking to and, uh, and other adults and parents. We're talking to you too. Exactly. Amen. Right. Oh, it makes, sorry. Side note. So mad when parents, children know their mom or dad, you know, they got, you know, their spouse died or they they got a divorce and they have their boyfriend or girlfriend because they're older, stay the night or be with them. And they're telling their children, oh. no, don't. Oh. And, and yet they're, Acting girl, like fools. Girl, I have that plenty of stories. all the time. I have plenty of stories of students and even like old clients were like, yeah, my mom lets me, lets my boyfriend stay over yep. on the sofa. Yeah, right. On mm-hmm. the sofa. Yeah. Or yeah. Under the covers. I'm looking at you teenagers. Even if people I'm are in your parents you. are in the house. No. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> all right. But next one. So this one is kind of a serious one and it's pretty loaded and i will mm. holy spirit help me to answer this one holy spirit activate, <laughs> holy spirit, activate. activate. sorry me and Ash. <laughs> i don't know if we can do the podcast we'll soon never anymore. be allowed to do this again oh oh okay. lord okay um now, <laughs> the question okay serious face <sighs> okay that was good what do I do when I cannot stop crying? And no matter how hard I try, I can't tell anyone mm. because I don't want to be a burden to them. And here's the hard part. And please don't say, just turn to God because I'm tired of hearing that answer. Mm. Wow. Oh, whoever wrote this, girl, boy, you are speaking my language because I was very much like mm. this. Well, I think... Let's just kind of start with always, always ask yourself, why am I feeling like this? Yeah. What is my trigger? What is causing me to cry? What is causing me to feel frustrated? What is causing me to feel upset? Is it, is it a lack of communication? Is it a hormonal issue? And I will say first Mm. thing for teenagers, I think, you know, like a lot of parents go, oh, they're just being a teenager. It's hormones. Well, I would say that's 50 percent of what a teenager is feeling. 50 percent of what your child is feeling or for you, teenagers, Gen Zers, kids, if your parents mm-hmm. let you watch this, 50 um, percent of what you experience is hormonal. Mm-hmm. And we just can't just throw that, you know, away. Right. But I would say the other half are genuine circumstances, stressors, things going on in the family. Maybe, you know, a parent said no, and maybe a teenager is just starting to learn boundaries. You know, like it could be a variety of things of why we cry and feel upset. And I think what parents tend to do, and it's well-meaning, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing when someone says, give it to the Lord. Yeah, that's true. We do. But and and we should. But at the same time. The reality is that sometimes we still feel gross and yucky inside. We still feel upset. We still feel depressed or anxious. We still feel this sadness, this confusion of like, Mm -hmm. who am I? What am I going through? Like, what's going on? Like, no one likes me. I I think I'm ugly. All of those are normal life experiences, teenager, that you are going to have. And so what are some practical ways to, to like move forward in that? Number one. I would I would find someone to talk to, whether it's someone that you trust. It doesn't have to be a counselor like me. It could be a youth group leader like Mariah mm-hmm. or Veli or Pastor Morgan or, mm-hmm. you know, someone here at church that you feel comfortable and confident telling like, you know what, I can be open and honest mm-hmm. to this per person about what I'm experiencing and what I'm feeling. Number two, identifying some of the root causes. And if you have a hard time doing that on your own, you could try journaling. You can Mm. try writing poetry. Mm. You can try just like venting on a phone, like sending like a sending like that message that you're never going to actually send. Mm. Like I used to do that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like if I'm upset at someone, I like would write this really long email Mm -hmm. 
but I would never send it. Yeah, but don't accidentally put their... Oh, no. Like, it's literally just <laughs> like, go to your notes app, write just it, and be it. like, ooh, yeah. I just swim so... In the, you know, like, you're just like, ooh, mm-hmm. I just can't do it. And you just get so... Fr- and you just, like, pour it all out, and then you realize, okay, I'm better. Mm-hmm. But in writing that, you, your brain processed a few mm-hmm. things. Like, you're processing it. And so that's one way to do it. Um, but also when you talk to uh, to someone, you're bouncing your what what's going on up here in your mind and what you're and what you feel like your heart is just like, you know, feeling that is something that's really important to bounce off of someone. Mm-hmm. A lot of times when we talk to ourselves, we're having those inner thoughts. We have our own thoughts. We're having like the Holy Spirit trying to reach in and talk to us. But then we also have like the voice of the enemy, like sticking all these like words and be like, you're never good enough. Your mom can't stand you. I, you know, saying I hate my mom or I hate my dad or they're the worst parents in the world. They're so strict or like my school just is the worst and I have no friends. No one likes me. Everyone hates me. All of these self-deprecating thoughts, it's good to bounce that off of someone. Mm. It's good to get that just out because that's where someone like me or like a friend can come in and uh, and let me kind of insert mm-hmm. this. Find a mature friend. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to your 13, 14, 15-year-old friend, you know, asking for life advice. You can do that. And, or non-Christians you know, who are just going to bring you to other things like here, correct smoke this joint yeah like oh this will calm you down like that's fine be really mindful of who you talk to Mm -hmm. find someone who has life experience advice and wisdom that is what i did i went to women who were older than me to help lead me and guide me and i will say and, and and i'll be very honest during my teenage years i had a very hard relationship with my mom and my dad to the point where in order for like in my mind like in my parents mind they thought if i send ashley away to get her away from all of this stuff then she'll be good so my parents well meaning they sent me to my aunt's house because they thought well you know she'll straighten me out right and so like i understand that like struggle and i used to hate when my mom and dad would be like we'll just pray about it Mm. or the bible says be obedient and that's it There's no processing. There's no Mm -hmm. understanding. There's no willingness. And so, you know, like talking to someone is not being a burden. But if you feel like maybe your mom and dad or whoever your guardians are are going through a lot and you feel like you can't go to them, go to someone that that you can. Mm -hmm. A teacher, your principal, the school counselor. Ask your mom and dad, I want to see a therapist. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like I need to let things out and I'm just not ready to talk to you guys about it yet, but I know that I want someone to talk to. And so, um, and just do practical things. When you're crying, when you're upset, do things to distract yourself. Journal, listen to music, praise and worship, Mm -hmm. draw a computer game, you know, like maybe like, Go play a game. Go go for a walk. Walk mm-hmm. the dog. I'm sure the dog likes being walked. Walk the dog. Walk your cat. I don't know. You know, carry your fish bowl if you if you <laughs> carry, <laughs> carry the fish bowl. Just don't trip. You know, just don't just don't drop the ball. Okay. Um, like do do something. Call phone a friend. Call your grandma. Call an aunt. Call the cool c- cousin that like you're you know super close to. If they're you know like a good example, mm-hmm. right? Like just do something to get out of your head. And then come back to it and go, have I moved on from this or do I need to process this a little Mm. bit more? Yeah, that's good. I like it. It's good. All right. We will do a few more questions, maybe two more. I'll do one and you can end. All right. um, So, I mean, these are all pretty similar. There's one on modesty, which we did a video on that. Uh, last week, so you guys can check that out. Um, but this one says, when should I get pregnant? Well, the easy question is when you're married. But <laughs> Praise uh, I would say <laughs> that nowadays, because there's like shows like 16 and Pregnant or whatever, Oof. they make it where it just looks glamorous and great. But when you're raising a child alone and you think that the baby daddy is going to stay, but he doesn't and all that, mm. it's not fun. <laughs> it's not a fun life. And... Not that the Lord can't redeem, and 
I would say too, and this kind of goes along, we've had other questions too about like abortion and things like that. Mm. I would say that I honestly commend and applaud more people who, you know, they have messed up. Like they, even if you're a Christian, you have known your whole life, okay, don't have sex, you know, before marriage. You did, you found out you're pregnant and you go through with the pregnancy, right? Those people at times too, there's more shame, especially in the church. That's why you end up going to the world. But if you're truly repentant and not like, let me keep sleeping around and doing that or whatever, um, but that really humbles you, I think that's a great thing. But the sad thing is nowadays it's like, oh, let me get pregnant and then the government will pay for my baby and this and that. And now I can have a baby and a thing to help me with my problems. And I just love babies. You know what I mean? I know. A lot of girls like that, where it's like they think a baby is going to fix their problems. And I would even say if you're married and you are really struggling with your spouse, like about to even separate, having a baby is not going to fix your problems. Oh. That's a big oh, thing, Lord. too. That is just people always think, Let, let's just have a baby. But really all, especially women, what they do is they put all their love to that baby. Yeah. So they ignore their spouse. They don't pay any attention. So uh, this child whoever's thinking about getting pregnant if you're married or whatever they need to have a strong head which would be the dad and they need a nurturing and loving mom that's not going to work if you guys are constantly fighting and upset and angry you don't want to raise a child in that but i would say to people because people are always like when should i get pregnant they're like dave ramsey says you'll never have enough money you'll never feel like you're ready um so if you're just everything's like okay and you're not like about to separate or get divorced um, but you're just afraid, I would say go for it because, you know, children are a blessing, but I don't know if I really answered the question, but, but now when you're a teenager, so if this is a teenager this asking is a teenager, this, no, I, 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 ooh, 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 we don't need any ooh. teen pregnancies. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> Unless you get married at 18, maybe, but still, I would say maybe wait a year oh, or so. Girl, no, no, but, oh. Make, differing opinions your- <laughs> on those ones i've met so many bible college girls like yeah, you true. you're three months engaged girl what what <laughs> no only married all right um all right next so question. my last question here is social media bad dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. so um i think this it's so social media is a double-edged sword yeah social media can be great but it can also be bad. Yeah. And so I would say social media is good for the sense that like with just the development of the internet and social media platforms, it gives you access to talk to so many like people, meet friends, connect, stay connected to people Mm -hmm. that you know and love and care about. Um, And you get to see kind of like their journey right like Mm -hmm. people make posts about like where they travel to and you're like oh my gosh like that's so cool Mm -hmm. I want to do that and 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 social media can be very inspiring it's Mm -hmm. a good ministry tool right but easily it can also easily ensnare exactly and so so social media in what I have seen is that it takes your time away Mm -hmm. it it like people spend two three four hours just scrolling aimlessly scrolling because Mm -hmm. their brain says i'm bored i'm bored and you're doing something to like stimulate your mind to just stay engaged Mm -hmm. right and so that's really hard and and then you have like men and like women wearing Mm. no clothes like the seriously the factory ran out of fabric (laughs) did the factory (laughs) run out of fabric for you know like for this outfit i don't you know like again like like we're not the social media police and we can't like police what people do on their like pay pages. But if you are not careful, what you allow for your eyes to see is going to consume you. And it will be a part of your, of your thought process, your emotions, how you feel, how you think there are going to be certain things that you're going to slowly start to accept Mm -hmm. that the Lord is like, no, like you need to, turn away from that like you need to run away like you need to flee that 
And so God's going to make God. God says, if you are tempted, I will make a way of escape. Exactly. But he's not going to just pull your cell phone like from your hand and goes like flying out. It's not Mm -hmm. like that. Right. It's going to be it's going to be you have to make that active choice to say, you know what? This isn't right for me to watch or Mm -hmm. look at. It's it's making me feel negative about myself. It's making me feel like I'm ugly. It's making me compare myself to other women and or 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 like view men and like oh I need bigger muscles mm-hmm. I need a I have a six pack now I need an eight pack you know mm-hmm. like my legs are skinny or something you know like I need I need to be bulkier I need mm-hmm. to do that like X Y Z or like mm-hmm. boys like their cars or like yep. their outfits and stuff and so people will lust after those things yep and so even if you're the one posting that kind of content how are people looking at it exactly you know is it like out of admiration like wow Mm -hmm. like that's really cool like you're like you're meeting goals right and they're a christ follower like wow like they're really doing Mm -hmm. that and they're serving an honorary god in this or is someone staring at you being like hey um like what's up like Mm -hmm. can like sliding in those dms Mm -hmm. and stuff like it really can ensnare so if so actually the holy spirit convicted me about two months ago to get off of Instagram Mm -hmm. for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how much Instagram was consuming my life. Mm -hmm. And I actually had my friends be, you know, like you, like I told you, I was like, Oh man, Mm -hmm. like I told another friend, a few others. And I was like, if you guys catch me on Instagram and you guys see that green button saying Ashley is logged on, you better call me and say, Hey, get off of Instagram. You owe me a hundred dollars. (laughs) You start charging yeah <laughs> but i mean it was in that that and and i'm 33 mm-hmm. it was in that where i was just like the lord is like ashley instagram is consuming your time like yeah. like that's what you're going to bed to yeah and mm-hmm. even though it's funny and i send friends stuff like crazy funny things <laughs> like i really do guys i i like she's a queen of funny i am the videos. meme queen they the just co- like queen. it just comes to me it really does <laughs> like these videos just like oh hilarious just come to me but anyway the point is, is that even I had to sacrifice that because it was consuming my life like like every day mm-hmm. when I would check on my data and my stats and be like, you spent six hours on Instagram. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I was at work for eight <laughs> hours. Like, what do you mean? How? Like, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. But those are things that like you have to be really mindful of. So to do a final synopsis, is, is social media, you know, bad? No. Is it good? Yeah, but there's also again, it's a two edged sword. It's good and bad, and you need to be mindful. Yeah. Um, and if someone's being like, "Hey, you're spending too much time on your phone," if your moms and dads go, "Hey, so and so, you're spending too much time on your phone," you need to see that as a sign mm-hmm. of I'm missing out on like memories with my family, with my mm-hmm. friends, with my church, and I need to get off for a little bit yeah don't worry it's going to be there when you get back Mm -hmm. instagram is not going to implode anytime soon or snapchat you know but be mindful of those things so there you go yeah and for me like my husband ryan hates social media like if he's listening (laughs) to this right now he's like the fact that ashley said it could be good is wrong because (laughs) he's seen as a man how bad it is like Mm. it attacks men it goes at them with pornography there's no filter in stopping it too with accountability apps so if you're a man that's trying to get out of that don't do it and it's a red flag for me when christian men are on it all the time truly anyway i mean not that i care now because i'm married i'm married to a man who doesn't like it but I think even Charlie Kirk had said it. Are you influencing people and shining like Jesus? Or are you being influenced? That's mm-hmm. what you have to see. Uh, there's a lot of also cyberbullying that happens. Yeah. There's also a lot of predators online. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have Snapchat, which is, is the in, worst. disgusting in general. The, yeah. Even the thought of it, how they disappear and whatever and go away. It's just bad things happen. Other uh, new thing like Twitch, everything t- like TikTok so many addictions with that and really a lot of times too when i see people who are just always on instagram you can tell they're all they're never satisfied they always need this new thing or they need to look this way like the comparison and so even youtube like youtube shorts now like they got that and i'm like oh come on even listening to this podcast and listening to podcasts too much for me i get convicted because the lord's like why don't you go to me like why don't you just open the bible 
not even your Bible app all the time because then you get distracted. Open the paper Bible and read the word and ask ask the Lord to speak to you. But we'd rather hear other men and women of God tell us about God than God himself tell us about him and what he desires for us. So that's just an encouragement for you guys. It's just... I personally would not let my children ever have social media, especially in this day and age, as much as I could protect it. Them, they can make their decision and their choice when they're 18 and they pay for their own phone. But it's too crazy out there. (laughs) Um, And I think children, kids just need to be kids. You need to go playing outside, playing sports, you know, all this stuff. Go roll around in the mud. Yeah. Go 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 get dirty in the mud. You know, (laughs) go go do a a cannonball in the pool. You know, like go do outside stuff. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, even we're adults and we need to do that more. It's just sad. It's true. Anyway, now that that is finished, turn off this video. Read your Bible. <laughs> no Get podcast. Off, read your Bible. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But for real, if the Lord tells you that and convicts you like he did with Ashley for the 30 days, do that. Listen to the voice of God and obey. But that was good. That was good. That good was job. fun. Yay. Hey, friends. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions that you would, you're not able to put in this little question box you guys can comment down below send us your questions you can also send us any questions on instagram um if you do have social media and we also would like you guys to check out our website calvaryconversations.com and you can email us our emails on there so you can email us as well and if you haven't already make sure to like subscribe share this video to maybe a friend um or just a random person just send them this video and also if you're a podcast listener make sure to check out our youtube if you're a youtube watcher then make sure you guys go to apple podcast spotify wherever your podcast leave us a five-star review that would help us a lot and um if you guys would like to follow us on instagram you can do that at cabri conversations and if you guys would like to donate to this podcast this is a listener supportive you guys can do that in the description below that says donate click on it and whatever amount you feel led from the lord to give that would bless us to get more guests we're gonna have our guest speaker chuck gerard come august 20th at our 9 a.m and 11 a.m service and he's going to be leaving leading worship if you guys watched the jesus revolution movie he was the one uh, with the band love song and yeah just a pioneer for christian contemporary music so we also want to do a podcast soon on christian music i know ashley and christian and i were talking Ooh. about that because you guys want to listen to good music and especially for you youth you want to listen to that like that bumping music mm. bumping <laughs> i don't know bussing what's all the words oh my god worse <laughs> got worse all the gen z words oh but, um, oh jesus <laughs> help us save us but it's exciting because yeah we can give you great recommendations and That's things true. like that yeah. so we love you guys so much i had a great time with I you ashley on this podcast you. and we'll see you next week thanks so much and god bless